Okay, so now we're done with talking about co covariance. Okay, so then we're ready to talk about correlation. And I recognize that correlation might be a term that many of you have heard, maybe formally, maybe not uh, informally. Okay, so now we're trying to define correlation uh, from the covariance that we talked about. Okay, so remember, since covariance depends on the magnitude of x and y, okay, uh, you might want to make sure that we can have a scale or like a particular measure about the relationship between x and y. Um, that is not particularly um, to, uh, affected by any changes in the scales of the random variables. So, so we uh, propose a new um, term here, correlation. Um, it is a measure of linear association, okay? Uh, the definition goes this way, okay? So this is rho, okay? So you call it rho. Rho xy is the ratio of the covariance of xy and the product of the squared uh, square root of variance x and that of variance of y. Okay, so in the <clears throat> denominator, as you know, this, like the first term is the standard deviation of x, okay, and the second term is the standard deviation of y. Okay, so what this generally tells us, okay, if you think about it, is that covariance, remember, tells us how they, how they behave or how they uh, relate to each other, right, and uh, then we are sort of like scaling it, okay, by the uh, variance, the, the standard deviation in particular of x and standard deviation of y. So we're sort of like standardizing, okay, this rho. And you can see that um, the range of rho, once you do this cal calculation and definition this way, the range of rho is really nicely down into negative one and positive one. Okay, so again, uh, what this, so that's what I mean by scaling. So like the magnitude of X or Y wouldn't affect, right? Because we're sort of like canceled it out by like from the covariance to and from the standard deviation. Okay, so um, notice here the range of the co correlations between negative one and positive one. Okay, so the magnitude, okay, the absolute value of the row measures the strength of the linear association. Okay, so this is very important to know that the correlation parameter, okay, that we're talking about here or in many other contexts that you have heard before as well is only talking about the linear association, okay? You might have other association like quadratic a relationship like y equals to x squared, that kind of stuff, okay? And by rho, if you compute for, for x and y in that case, like x is x and the y is x squared, rho does not tell you, okay, much about um, the covariant, uh, like the linear relationship, okay? In fact, for that counterexample earlier, we know that covariance of x and y when y equals to x squared, right, for a particular x to be like that uniform distribution is zero, okay? Um, so for, for them, the linear relationship is, is non, sort of like zero over there, okay? Uh, but we know that y is x squared, right? They're definitely related, it's a quadratic uh, relationship. So um, yeah, I'm just trying to use that example to show that correlation is indeed only talking about linear relationship, okay? It's not about any other relationship, okay? So let's see. So like I said, the magnitude of it, the absolute value of it uh, measures like measures the strength, okay, of the linear relationship. And the sign, positive or negative, um, do, denotes whether it's a positive um, <clears throat> relationship or a negative relationship, okay? So if rho equals to zero, okay, then we're gonna say that they're not correlated or uncorrelated, okay? But um, if rho equals to one, then we are saying that it's very strongly um, positively correlated, okay, for x and y. If uh, rho xy equals to negative one, then that is a strong negative relationship, okay? But you could have all kinds of rho values, okay? But don't forget, it's bounded below by negative one and bounded above by positive one, okay? The closer it is to zero, the weaker the linear relationship or association, okay? The uh, like the larger, or I should say, the closer it is to positive one, the stronger the positive correlation, okay? The closer rho, um, to negative one, the stronger the negative correlation or relationship, okay? All right, we do have a few graphs over here just to give you a sense, okay, of how our correlation really uh, takes place in, in practice, okay? So uh, let's see, okay, maybe we can start with the first, yeah, let's start with the first row here, okay? So what this is telling us, okay, so um, think about like say this one and this one, they are the extreme cases of um, positively, very strongly positively correlated, meaning that y equals to one actually in this, in this, uh, sorry, let me take that back. Like they're, they're closely related, right? There's a straight line going through it, okay? 
of all of the data clouds, okay? And it's positive, right? The, the slope of this line is positive, okay? So that's why it's a um, correlation, it's a positive correlation, and it is the case that y equals, uh, the row equals to one. And then if you have a straight line going downwards, okay, then uh, the correlation is negative one, okay? So this is um, data generated and then you can compute, okay, how they are, okay, how the row is, and then these are the two cases that we start with, okay? And then if now we look at like this pair, okay? And then this pair, okay? This two pairs as we can see, okay? So if we compare these two, okay? So we see that, well, um, the data, right? Compared to 0.8, the 0.4 case, the data are more scattered around, okay? So remember the correlation is showing us the linear, the strength of the linear relationship, okay? So we overall still see, you see, like if you know any kind of like a concept of like linear regression and stuff like that, you know that there might be like a line going through it, okay? Like, but then how closely those dots are to that straight line, okay? is showing us, right, the strength of the linear relationship, okay? So clearly point four, you have data points more scattered around that imaginary straight line that you can think of. So no wonder compared to this case, it is having a lower positive uh, correlation, okay? Similarly, right, when you have downwards trend, okay? So again, if you have the imaginary line going through them, um, that is telling you, um, right, the, like the slope, right? Um, the slope, like the, the sign of the slope itself, whether it's downward or upward, is telling us it's a positive relation or a negative relationship, okay? But once more, um, the magnitude, right, of row itself tells us the strength of the linear relationship, okay? And the middle one here, okay, is a case that is zero correlation, okay, meaning that there is no real linear relationship between them, okay? It's just randomly scattered around, okay? So if you compare zero to uh, 0.4 and negative 0.4 here, I think you can see that they are more scattered around. And in some way, you don't even know, right, how to figure out a <laughs> a straight line going through it could be anywhere sort of okay so that's another way to think about it okay so the second row is also interesting okay as you can notice that as long as it's a straight line okay the magnitude of row is always one sort of okay uh, but then of course okay the uh whether it's upward or downward okay the direction of that straight line i think is telling us whether it's positive or negative Okay, so keep in mind, correlation is telling us the linear relationship, right? So if X and Y are linearly uh, dependent from each other, just like all of um, the second line is tell us, the second row is telling us, then that is the case that um, their correlation, the magnitude of the correlation row is one, but then depending on the slope, okay, positive or negative of that straight line, it's either positive, uh, which is one, okay, or negative, uh, which is negative one. Okay, the last row is pretty important and interesting as well. Like I said, uh, correlation, okay, is really only telling us about the linear association, okay, the strength and then the value of it, okay, the magnitude of the row, the correlation coefficient is only um, about uh, the strength of the linear relationship, okay. So you could have X and Y to have certain nonlinear relationship, okay. And row in that case does not tell us much, okay? Because remember, row is only about the linear association. So in the last row over here, they're all correlation zero, okay? But clearly, okay, X and Y, I think, or the two random variables that we're working with over here seem to be related to each other somehow, right? Just not linearly, okay? But they're related to each other somehow. So <clears throat> in this case, notice, and just as one more example as what we're talking about again, that relationship, uh, the correlation is really just about the linear relationship and um, it does not measure other type of relationship, okay? So when you get a correlation zero, all you can say is that they're not linearly related to each other, okay? But they could, okay, have other kind of relationships going on.